Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the 2023 top 10s as I am going to start the 168 pound super middleweight division and we are going to look at the dropouts, the fighters that dropped out from last year's top 10. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So the dropouts, as I explained, are the fighters that dropped out from last year's top 10. We're gonna go over uh, uh, who dropped out, why they dropped out, we'll go lowest to highest based on where they were ranked, and um, you know, what possibly is coming in their future, if, if anything. So uh, only three fighters dropped out of last year's top 10. Um, so we're gonna go from lowest to highest. We start with 39 year old, former two time WBC super middleweight champ, Anthony Durrell. Durrell um, previously was number nine. He entered uh, 2023 coming off of that brutal knockout loss to Caleb Plant in a, in a, what, a competitive fight. You know, Anthony Durrell's not a, not a pushover. You know, he was in it. He was, he was doing okay. He was actually la uh, landing a flurry of punches. Excuse me. And then he got caught with that devastating left hook by Caleb Plant. Drop. And uh, what was, uh, that might have been my, my knockout of the year. I can't really remember. But that was a big win for Anthony Durrell as he, um, you know, put everybody on notice. <clears throat> but um, Durrell now... At 39, um, he just didn't fight at all in 2023. And I wasn't really surprised by that. I really think he's contemplating retirement, but he never came out and officially retired. So Anthony Durrell, yeah, he drops the number nine, or he drops out because of the inactivity. Hopefully he bounces back in, because I still think he can compete at a, at a high level with a lot of these guys, you know, at super middleweight. But um, it might also be, you know, time for him to throw in the towel, especially after a brutal loss like that. Because the one thing, the one reason I think retirement might be the best bet is not just his age. It's the way he lost to a guy that generally doesn't have a ton of power in Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant's not a big power puncher. He landed a brutal left hook. That means Darrell's slow enough to get timed by a guy who's not a big power puncher and get, and get brutally knocked out like that so that's not like I said that's not a good sign and it's a it can be a recipe for disaster so tough break for Anthony Durrell uh, not fighting um, I, 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 if he does come back I hope he uh, you know I hope he does but I wouldn't be surprised if he retires this year and calls it calls it a day we'll see what happens uh, on him next guy to drop out is 32 year old undefeated top contender Vladimir Shishkin who came into the year number eight, but uh, only went one and oh, he only fought one time this year. And I just feel like the guys that are in the top 10 have done more and you know, and, it, and it's not Shishkin's fault. Uh, he's the IBF's number two contender right now. So he's one of those fighters that's on the bubble. He'll be on the on the bubble video. But you know, I looked over his resume. He really only had the one big win over Jose Ustadegui, and that was in 2022. He didn't really capitalize on that. Again, not his fault because the, none of the governing bodies really mandate Canelo to defend any of his belts against mandatory. Shishkin was the number one contender. He's not a big name. So Canelo's not gonna fight a guy who doesn't have a solid name. So this year, maybe the IBF finally says, okay, we're gonna determine an interim champ or a, um, you know, uh, a mandatory challenger and maybe they have Shishkin fight for that but other than that I'm not sure what he does outside of taking a risk and fighting somebody like David Morrell or um, maybe he can be um, a guy that fights David Benavidez in May because they're both PBC guys so we'll see but I do think uh, Shishkin has a solid shot of landing back in the top 10 and then the last guy to drop out is 36-year-old former two-time middleweight champion of the world, Daniel Jacobs. He came into the year number five. Um, he, he was coming off of a 2022 where he got upset by John Ryder after w leading in the fight and then would uh, Ryder would rally in the second half and Jacobs would drop a close split decision. But um, 
he didn't fight at all either in 2023. You know, just inactivity. Um, it seems like since uh, since he got married to that actress a couple years back, that um, just boxing hasn't been his his primary thing. You know, and that might be it for Daniel Jacobs. J Jacobs might seriously be considering retirement, which is a shame for him because I do feel like he's got the talent and the tools to still make an impact. But you got to have the drive for it. And at 36, you know, does he really have the drive for it? I mean, obviously he could compete at that level because he was winning that fight against John Ryder. And I think if he kicks it into a little bit of an extra gear in the second half of the fight, he probably secures the win. But he didn't. And um, that cost him the fight, in my opinion. So we're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see how Jacobs bounces back um, and if he bounces back. But... Um, the inactivity really is significant. So if he comes back, he's got to come back, probably gets a tune-up, and then maybe secure a bigger fight in the second half of the year. And again, I just don't know if the drive is there for Daniel Jacobs. So we'll see. But that's it. That's what I got. That is my 168-pound super middleweight 2023 top 10s as they begin at super middleweight with the dropouts. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.